probably started way back maybe 20 years ago. I was a musician and wanted to uh, create gigs for my, my fellow muso mates. And um, we started this thing called the Funk Club, which was a musician's club. Which uh, and we used to have our our meetings every Friday night upstairs at the Leadable Hotel, and you know two or three people would two two or three hundred people would come up and listen to live original bands and would have DJs and we had uh, a big membership base um, and we used to put on different events and uh, was sort of as was sort of based on building a social club and building a community around the music um, that we love, which was funk and hip hop and jazz and Afro beat and all that sort of stuff. And that was my first um, introduction to, you know, the power of community um, because so many, you know, it was that sort of, you know, creating a network, I guess, of, of people that supported people. And, you know, over the last 20 years, I've seen, you know, obviously people who met at the Funk Club and, you know, gone on to get married and have families or, you know, create businesses together or, just um, just hang out together. It's sort of the way that it's enhanced and improved so many people's lives was something that really um, I think I valued very highly and sort of appreciated very much and realised that's probably something that maybe is lacking a little bit in the in the current world. As uh, you know, certainly growing up, you know, you have school and everything, but th that sort of power of local communities and strong networks is probably not as strong as perhaps it once was. I, uh, yeah, I went and continued to sort of being a music promoter, I guess, and um, we used to do gigs and started touring acts and different things. Um, but I uh, wasn't until I, there was this uh, group called Leadable Connect who started in Leadable, who was one of the first town teams as we didn't call them town teams back then so this is about 10 years ago uh, and they rang me and they said oh Jimmy you know look we really want want to do this street festival but we don't really know how to do it because I was sort of a local promoter in the area you know I came in and sort of helped them out and uh, we ended up creating something called the Leaderville Carnival which was um, ended up being a giant street festival throughout Leaderville and we did that every year for several years um, and my experience of that was um, really incredible because it was essentially very collaborative community building. Um, we had businesses talking to each other for the first time, residents talking to each other for the first time. It was through that event, there was a real sense of community that was already existing in Leaderville, but just um, enhanced and, you know, it's really wonderful community and economic outcomes for the town of Leaderville. Um, and I sort of fell in love with this sort of new but old model of, of what we call town teams now, which is essentially residents and um, businesses coming together to, to contribute to a better society and support each other. Um, and so I ended up starting to be asked to do other street festivals by different members of these other groups in other suburbs around Perth who started pop popping up. So Mount Hawthorne and... Subiaco and Vic Park and I soon realised that uh, these groups were amazing but there wasn't anything sort of supporting them or um, or there wasn't any sort of knowledge transfer so they were all working in silos and up against all the same issues, not enough money, problems with trying to get things through council, trying to get council on board um, or, or sort of any sort of form of support. So that's when we started talking about well, it was originally called Vincent Foundation when we first started talking about the town team movement, but um, it became town team movement because uh, it was, um, we realised that, yeah, this was much bigger than just um, within the city of Vincent. So, uh, yeah, we, we decided that we wanted to help everyone. And, yeah, now we've, uh, a couple of years down the track, we've got about 50 teams right across Australia and New Zealand that we support. And yeah, it's going uh, quite well. It's really, really, um, it's a wonderful thing to be part of. Yeah, but we're we're essentially a network of of people who who want to contribute to society. That's what. So was it? Was it? You know, sometimes the frustrations of 
of some councils and how they operate that prompted you to become a councillor yourself? No, I became a councillor um, because yeah, I was doing so much work in the community of Vincent and um, I became friends with quite a few of the councillors at Vincent and they just kept on bugging me to, to run for council. <laughs> and I said, no, I resisted for a few years and then eventually I caved in and uh, agreed to, to run, which was a wonderful experience. You know, it was great sitting on council and understanding because I, I was obviously just a musician and event organiser prior to coming on council and a community activist, I guess. But uh, yeah, when I sat on council, it was a whole new world for me. And, uh, you know, yeah, understanding how governments work and the bureaucracy. And yeah, it was very insightful because... I guess you get a deeper insight into why perhaps some things are the way they are, but then also, yeah, equally frustrating, especially how long everything takes in government, even a little government like the city of Vincent, which is only tiny, really, is very, uh, it's, it takes a long time to, to get anything through. I think that's, um, that's part of the problem, really, you know, that we need to need to work out ways that we can sort of be more efficient with these organisations and, you know, we can talk about that. <laughs> it seems like. as though sometimes, you know, they, they have these five or ten year plans and, um, and they're set in stone. Um, they're not dynamic enough to, to, you know, necessarily roll with things if something happens, like COVID, for example. So... Um, you know, I've been doing a lot of work in the community sector space who, again, have those set in stone strategies and plans and it, it, it can be frustrating. So I've, I've seen the other side as well. You know, as an entrepreneur, you're trying to be nimble. Um, how many times have you had to dance on your toes, Jeremy? Jeremy? Uh, Adam, you know, you you have to be agile, nimble, and be able to to pivot. Um, and I don't know if that's a language that's in in those kind of organisations. So, uh, you know, doing the work that you do with town teams now, obviously, hopefully the council are seeing the other side of things as well, and that's where the the, the benefit for all parties will come from. So. And, you know, most of us here now could say that we've been to probably one of those festivals at some stage um, that you started all those years ago. And I've certainly been to Leaderville and Subiaco on, on numerous occasions when the festivals are on now. So you and I have been talking with City of Jindalup. Hopefully we, we'll get a town team movement happening up in my neck of the woods. I'll become a, a lot more active then. And... Uh, and I think it, the timing is just, it's just right, it's, you know. Yeah, I mean, with the local government, you know, it's funny because, you know, um, local governments obviously criticise often about, you know, the sort of excessive red tape and, yeah, you know, sort of um, excessive regulation, especially on businesses, um, which I think is sort of a, spe a fair point in, the, in this world. Um, but uh, but it sort of I find it strange that very little is talked about actually the state government um, regulation imposed on local governments. So it's sort of like you know big fish imposing on little fish, and then the bigger fish, you know, imposing on the the bigger fish. If you know what I mean. So there's you know there's this sort of yeah the idea that you know state government regulates. Um, local government so they insist on you know the local governments need a whole planning framework um, and, and part of that is the 10 year strategic plan which is which is i guess is an effort by state government to try and ensure that local governments are listening to their community um, and and incorporating their community into their long-term aspirations and vision and it you know it's certainly the intent is very positive, well-meaning, but I think you're right that that then having that strategic plan that then forms their corporate business plan, which works in four-year cycles, and then uh, out of a, a you know, and then feeds into an annual budget. It it does 
become quite unwieldy. And in a, in a world, you know, and historically that probably would have been fine, but when you've got a world of, yeah, crisis and, and constant change, huge amounts of um, change with online innovations and, you know, business innovations and all sorts of things, it becomes very, very, um, yeah, unwieldy. Mm. Um, and so it's something that is imposed by the state government to try and, um, I guess, ensure that local go local governments are, are listening and incorporating ideas of the community is actually slows things up because it becomes very bu bureaucratic. So, um, you know, I think that, that, you know, there needs to be some state government reform in the um, local government sector. And they have been talking about that in this new government. So I'd be interested to see what they come up with. Um, yes, all sorts of uh, issues with local governments. The other one that particular bugbear of mine is that sort of trying to treat local governments almost as corporate structures. So, you know, a council being the city board and then employing the CEO to run the city on, on its behalf. There's a lot of issues there because community expectations are that councils run the show. But in actual fact, really the CEO runs the show and councils just get to employ the CEO. Um, and then approve budgets or not, and then write bits of policy as to when the CEO gets around to getting to <laughs> getting to it or not, you know. So there's, you know, and so then if anything bad happens or you know the community is, oh, you asshole, you you know, evil council, and it's kind of like, oh, we wanted to not do that, but you know, we were lucky in our city of Vincent because we've always had collegiate um, relationships with our CEOs, but um. I know there's many councils who have fractured relationships within their council and within their CEO, and then that that becomes very, very difficult to get anything done, you know. So there's a few there's a few structural issues there that I think need to be addressed. But it doesn't stop us continuing to do what we do. So you know that's, no, good, that's but, right. yeah. So Adam, you you were gonna say something? Uh yeah, uh, you, Jim, you just said that, that you help many towns all over Australia with um, with these things. What are some examples of things that people ask ask for help? Yeah, so most of the town teams' activities are, is around about um, supporting local businesses and bringing communities together around town centres or main streets. Um, in uh, uh, so the main other areas that we operate in outside of Western Australia is uh, Canberra, Sydney, and New Zealand, um, and Tasmania as well now. Um, Canberra, I guess, is the most interesting um, for me because I guess it's the, it's, uh, the most different in terms of the way that Canberra is organised. So they, their council, so they're mostly run by their state government and then uh, their councils are more sort of almost advisory groups um, so they don't really have very big teeth, <laughs> and so um, so most pretty much the 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 states run by the state government, um, and so um, actually the, our town team model is um, seems to make a lot of sense there because you're able to get sort of the finer grain engagement um, with with town teams who. Um, who are able to get stuff done. So I guess the thing the holding back, the problem with the ACT is that when it's this sort of big bureaucratic state government structure, trying to do things like, um, you know, placemaking or events or activities and anything with high risk, um, that, that it just gets completely bogged down in the bureaucracy. Um, you know, really bad, like way worse than even here in WA we complain about it, but Canberra, it's another level, you know, and so uh, for people to do anything, to try and get anything through this big machine over there um, is is very difficult. Um, and, you know, we, we're we finding it even, um, you know, as sort of perceived experts, sort of trying to work with the the state government over there is very, the bureaucracy is entrenched and that sort of aversion to risk is, in, is entrenched. And, um, and that idea that, no, we're the government and we do everything. Don't worry, community. You know, we've got this. You know, you just sit back, you know, in front of your TV, you know, or whatever. That's very much, <laughs> you know, uh, even worse.
than he is. So, you know, trying to trying to have those sort of conversations with governments where it's like, no, 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 these people want to help. They can help you do your job, you know, and you don't have to be threatened by that. That can work for everyone. You know, <laughs> like it's an interesting conversation to have. Um, and that's what we're trying to do. But yeah, we've got a long, long way to go, especially in Canberra and those bigger state government agencies across Australia. Right. So Maggie, have you, you got any questions for, uh, for Jimmy? Or? Well, I used to live in Canberra. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> so it was interesting hearing your take because um, I, I actually found the, the, um, because Canberra has an ALP and Green uh, government, it was quite responsive to community. And I agree that throughout Canberra, it's really risk averse. And you, um, I agree with that. It's really the federal uh, public service that set that tone. But I also found all sorts of community initiatives in Canberra and, and a real ease of accessing politicians and key leaders and networking around the place. So I'm mm. not sure that you're entirely fair to Canberra. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. I guess for us, because, uh, you know, a lot of our work is um, directly through some of those, the state agencies that we sort of see it on the inside, see the sort of inside out. Whereas, yeah, if you have, obviously, if you, yeah, when you've got that top down and you've got um, politicians on board for any activities, then yeah, things tend they to happen. They're really responsive. Um, and yeah, um, and there are all sorts of initi uh, interesting initiatives in Canberra around participative, participatory democracy is one that's quite strong. Mm -hmm. um, different models to get social housing happening is another. I don't know what's happened under COVID because I haven't been there, but I, I was always really, really impressed with, with Canberra. And it was weird. It was, there's a completely different culture to WA. I remember turning up to all sorts of events similar to the events I came to in Perth. Like I used to go to a lot of stuff at Space Cube. And when I went to the equivalent stuff in Canberra, I noticed that the dress code was completely different which might seem superficial, but it's highly revealing. <laughs> and um, all sorts of quite prominent people looked, uh, looked like aging hippies. And I thought, wow, you know, there's, there's a very strong left of center um, uh, culture in Canberra, stronger than in Perth. Yeah, I'd agree with that. And yes, I certainly wasn't bashing, um, Canberra bashing or, or uh, criticising the people of Canberra at all. In fact, some of our town teams, a couple of town teams in Canberra, uh, I would say in some ways, even way further ahead than, than our town teams in Perth. I was more making a comment on the bureaucracy. Yeah. Um, parts of the bureaucracy. But yeah, I agree, absolutely. But it's more accessible than in WA, I think, in Canberra. Ah. You, know, you don't get your state minister, you don't get your senior state heads of department nearly as accessible in WA. And maybe that's where we're going wrong. We're not uh, involving high enough levels of, uh, of, of <laughs> the political class over there. We're trying to, trying to go head to head with the bureaucracy. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, yeah. Jeremy? Have you, uh, have you had any dealings with, with Canberra? No, I was just listening to Maggie there and uh, started to do some Googling on um, the structures over there. It's one state uh, and territory we haven't really had a lot to do with, but um, that's possibly remiss of us to, you know, hearing the conversation, it potentially it might be a, a great to reach out. And I think the work we do aligns quite heavily with town teams. Um, yep. They're enablers and we see ourselves as enablers and of of activation of economic development, community development, all the good, good things. So, um, yeah, I've got some homework to do. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks. Dylan, have you managed to fix your uh, your audio? And yeah, you any can everyone hear me? Okay. Yeah, beautiful, mate. Yep. Yeah. yeah. No, sorry, I'm just sort of running about eating and and um, preparing <laughs> for another right. meeting at one, so I just haven't had my video on, but um. Yeah, no, thanks, Jimmy. It's, um, I've really enjoyed, I guess, following the town team movement. I guess maybe one question and an interest 
um, given who's on the call, I know um, Jeremy Hurst and Space to Cove have built a really great digital pl platform that's you know, increasing the utilisation of space in communities. Um, and I know in the past, Ankle, um, we had a really good event, I think last year with um, Darren Sharp from Shareable <laughs> on the whole sort of sharing cities movement. I guess, um, you know, I've sort of haven't, um, I'm aware of like the local town team in my area um, in Applecross, Mount Pleasant. But I, I guess I'm really interested in terms of initiatives that town teams are starting. And is there a, you know, a lot of our work is, is focused on, or my work and interest is focused around um, this, this transition towards um, circular economies. And I think something that town teams can enable is, you know, these sort of sharing initiatives, like things like tool libraries, um, space sharing. I know on the last Nina call, we had the crew from Beehive, which is, you know, just a really cool um, like digital platform for Bendigo. Are you seeing um, like, what are some of the, the more like, you know, really sort of, yeah, are there, are there many sort of sharing initiatives from town teams around like tool libraries or other things around, um, that are really sort of like, yeah, real sort of disruptive innovations. Are you seeing that in town teams or is it more focused around placemaking events, arts, those sorts of things? Yeah, I think we're, we're definitely getting there. I mean, it is still very much placemaking arts um, events um, focused, but, you know, that is, you know, an idea that sort of the entry point, I guess, where, you know, which is hopefully the beginning of people's journey back into you know, becoming active citizens and, and, you know, contributing back to society. And so, yeah, some of the more mature teams definitely get very, um, or have got it very involved in, um, yeah, the future design of their towns. And, you know, a leader will, I guess, go on a way into advocating and really taking hold of, you know, what they want to see leadable come. And even then having the appropriate conversations with, um, yeah, different levels of government and developers and um, other people to to take a really proactive stance towards future development of leadable rather than you know reactive in terms of yeah see a development and uh, you know pop up for consideration and and try and oppose that they're sort of trying to say well be on the front foot and say well this is what we want our town to look like and can you help us bring that into fruition um, which is pretty I think for, quite exciting, you know, which, which you know, creates a better environment for everyone in terms of the future planning of that. And other other teams uh, do other things, whatever they're interested in. So, you know, the Vic Park team is very involved in the um, urban forest uh, strategy for, for Vic Park and help um, bring that about. Yeah, I guess beyond, yeah, that sort of... Um, events, markets, festivals type stuff. In terms of town team movement, we're certainly trying to, um, I guess we, a big part of our role other than sort of creating a network is uh, what we call play governance. Trying to make it easier for these groups to be able to operate together. So we have a three page constitution um, that we yeah make available in our resource hub. So we've got a resource hub of all different um, how to guides and yeah, example constitutions and different things that can make it that can able, enable them to to work more efficiently together. There has been actually in a sort of uh, post COVID world world a big push for the teams to to actually go less bureaucratic in the sense that you know even sort of you know a lot of the conversations are around oh do we really need to have a chair? Do we need a secretary? Do we need a treasurer? Can we just be a bit more fluid in a working group? Do we need to have regular monthly meetings? Probably not. You know, we just want to get on and do stuff and sort of, um, yeah, so working out the, the governance around that and how they can still operate as a legal not-for-profit entity but be able to do, yeah, stuff more efficiently and really um, get to the core of what that team wants to achieve and why they want to achieve it. So that's a lot of the stuff that we're um, doing. And then we're working on ways that we can try and help assist local governments in terms of yeah, supporting town centres and supporting local businesses in town centres because I guess, you know, local governments are very good at sort of regulating and planning, but um, there's not, you know, they're not perhaps so good at helping manage and curate and develop and promote town centres um, to support local businesses. Um, and so that's sort of an area that we're trying to help um, support everyone in too. So yeah, which which is, I think, you know, 
uh, in terms of an alignment of principles, I think it's definitely in line with with what um, you guys are about. The you know in terms of you know being considered you, you know focus on um, social justice or trying to to make it fairer and supporting everyone. Um, you know so there's a lot of different sustainability um, foundations. Um, yeah, when you talk about circular economy and stuff, how do we bring sort of arts and creativity and um, other elements into into cultural, local or localism, local cultural life, and supporting each other through other ways of you know um, economic means? Hope that sort of answers your question. <laughs> yeah, no, it does. Thanks for that. It's all, all really good stuff. So I saw a very wonderful uh, webinar that you were on just a couple of days ago with Emma and um, uh, Kirsty, Christy, um, what's her name? Is it Kirsty? Oh, Claire? Is that Claire? Uh, yeah. She's a Oh, no, no, no. I, that, no. I saw that one as well, but um, when you were talking about shift, so. Oh, yeah. I think, I think you know, that's an exciting event that uh, people who, are not here can actually come along to and be part of and um, and just see how much activity there is because you know there's six people here but there could be 600 people here um, and there should be 600 people here we you know we're, we're all doing our things in isolation and I think just connecting every now and again just reinforces that what you're doing is really critical to creating the future that we you know, we, we perceive that we want. So I'm hoping your shift conference is, uh, is going to be fun and funky. And um, so, yeah, if you can tell us a little bit about that, it'd be great. Yeah. So that's, um, it's actually kind of interesting because we were working on shift um, before uh, COVID um, and we wanted to have a series of breakfast talks um, and talking about, essentially ways that we can work better as groups uh and and then uh covid hit and then we were like oh well that's not happening and yeah threw it in the rubbish bin that concept but then um uh yeah it was interesting seeing during covid how there was you know more and more examples of community kind of stepping up to support itself um you know and it I'm sure you guys would have all seen, you know, the teddy bears on the fences and the, you know, maybe the driveway dinners and communities mobilising to, you know, send out lists of local businesses who are doing takeaways and, um, you know, wonderful uh, community initiatives of uh, examples of community supporting community, um, either to help them feel more connected and safe or, yeah, supporting local businesses or whatever. And that was, I guess, what we're wanting to talk about, which is, you know, this sort of idea of how do we co cooperate better and how do we give community a bigger role in society um, rather than, yeah, just being uh, government or business uh, who are sort of taking care of things. Um, and so we, um, yeah, we got shift back out and dusted it off because as a concept, we were like, oh, wow, this is actually perfect. This is what we want to be talking about. Um, and so, yeah, so we've ended up, um, it's going to be a digital conferences on the 31st of um, July. Uh, we've got a whole range of speakers from around Australia and New Zealand um, talking about um, all things to do with um, how do we, yeah, how do we work together? How do we have community or what are some of the things that we learned from COVID and how do we keep that going into this sort of new normal? Um, what is this new normal look like? How can it be? Um, how can we do things? Well, as we're returning back to normal, how do we do things better than perhaps we did before um, using some of the learnings of um, COVID? So, yeah, that's that's um, going to be a really interesting conversation. We're sort of doing a whole bunch of different things. It's going to we're using uh, a combination of this platform, Zoom, but we're also integrating Mighty Networks, which is a um, another great platform. So there'll be opportunities for chat rooms, asking questions, um, working on um, documents. So we want to sort of try and um, through the participants to come out with a, a bit of a co collaborative vision for what the new normal might be and what it could be. Um, so there'll be a little bit of work to do during the conference, but nothing too heavy. 
yeah, so I'm really, yeah, we're really excited. It's going to be great. Um, so definitely come along to that. Um, yeah, um, I'm sure for, uh, for New Economy Network members, um, you can register for free. So it's for free for all um, town team members and, and we, I'm sure we can extend that to NIDA members. So definitely um, to come along, I'll, um, I can post a link in the chat session if you like to, um, to uh, register. Adam's just posted it up for you, Jimmy. That's good. Oh, amazing. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Adam. <laughs> Yeah, so come along because I think it's an important conversation and I guess, you know, you guys are probably just as frustrated as us in the sense that there's so much rhetoric around construction and renovation of homes and building new roads and railways and everything in, in order to help us into this, you know, recovery. But, uh, you know, where's the, you know, where's the social infrastructure? Where's the conversations around... How do we actually build real businesses or, you know, you know, a real new economy beyond that sort of, um, you know, 19th century thinking, you know, how do we actually, you know, help support, yeah, networks and build new businesses that are going to be relevant in this new era? And that just seems to be very little of that sort of conversation. And so we're, yeah, that's, that's why we're one of the big things that we're trying to talk about and maybe produce some stuff but it's pitched at it's pitched at local governments lots of local governments there um and a chance to sort of have that conversation with people thank you you know local government i think is going to play a a, a much bigger part in um the social cohesion you know they are doing their planning right now and in fact city of jindalup have just put out a survey on to, to the residents of jindalup you know what how do you identify the city of jindalup you know like the city of lights or you know what what is jindalup's identity so even the council doesn't know that at this moment in time things have changed so much so they're asking for that feedback and now that's just one council i'm i should imagine there are others who as part of good governance and and um, and the directions that they're be, being given, is to engage community more. So there's probably never been a better time than there than there is right now. And mm. um, and you know that Jimmy, you know you're you're linking in with international organisations like Place Making X, and you know Ethan has got a brilliant mind around. Um, you know, space activation and the future. and But, you know, we're all part of that if we choose to be. Um, it can't be passive. It has to be active. I just yeah. wanted to, uh, Jimmy, you just got me thinking around, um, I guess, this bureaucracy with what you were just saying and how um, in the rush to kind of, you know, sugar hit the economy with some activity to get things moving again that we don't build stuff we just don't want. And it made me think of a picture just flashed up in my mind, which I just shared with you all, which was just kind of this, you know, this concrete wall that often is faced. Uh, we all, a lot of people on the street level face, which is just this very inhuman building that doesn't really provide you any uh, access to other people for serendipitous meetings or all the good stuff that you guys at town teams try to achieve. So, um, yeah, I thought that photo was a good summary of what we need to avoid. Yeah, that's great. You know, I mean, you can't be too critical of them, I guess, because, it, you know, that's what they do, I guess, build infrastructure and that's that's part of their remit. But, yeah, there, need, there needs to be some way to, yeah, to support the... Um, you know, there's no point, yeah, having a big concrete wall or road that nobody uses. Um, and so, you know, there needs to be that sort of activation or, yeah, utilisation of it. And there often isn't a whole lot of thought of, it, of that around that, especially when it comes to any sort of community or economic development, I find anyway. Yeah, I've jumped on a few webinars recently with the Economic Development Australia people and there, a lot of them... Um, are saying uh, the right kind of things just around making sure that um, streets aren't just all about cars and that they they put in place really good uh, initiatives and measures to help promote humanity really at the end of the day 
So the people in council that seem to want to do this kind of work, um, and every council is different. Some councils don't even have an economic development officer, but they're starting to realise you can't have an economically vibrant high street or hub if it's just a traffic centre, because that just kills the spirit of what that street is all about. And I think Leader was a really nice example where traffic is almost taken second place to people and the results are really tangible, I think. So Yeah, I hundred percent agree with that. Yeah, because people don't feel very safe in a town centre when the cars are driving through at 50, 60, 70 kilometres an hour. Yeah, Leadable's been really lucky because it's sort of because they chopped Oxford Street in half to put the freeway in. And so then that no longer became the main street. And so the main street was is sort of Vincent Street. And so then you, that southern end of Oxford Street is uh, is sort of safe, this little sort of safe cul-de-sac almost, isn't it? So it's just more by accident than anything. They've certainly capitalised on that. Yeah, I think that's definitely a conversation that we're wanting to, to have with other um, communities who are interested, is, yeah, trying to reduce speeds to have people feel safe in town centres so that, yeah, they can linger longer and and hang out and um and then yeah that and part of that is that sort of trying to, to facilitate creation of more public open space in town centers and playgrounds and um yeah uh areas that will make people want to use town centers you know yeah i think so i think it's it's, it's a longevity thing. Um, so those, you know, there's sometimes the new shiny new buildings that get um, put forward are, um, yeah, they don't they don't give you that longevity that you're really after. So. Hi, Bethan and I have just been chatting in the chat. Um, she apologises, she didn't know it was on or, uh, and just came and joined us when she knew it was. So. I was going to say gonna hi, sneak quietly at the back. <laughs> <laughs> Work. <laughs> Uh, yes, the the 300 participants that we we were anticipating um, didn't quite materialise. So I'm, I, and I'm kidding. Yes. <laughs> well, the best people are here, so you know, screw the other 293. <laughs> <laughs> so we were just sort of talking about the shift conference and um, how that's going to, um, you know, to. to bring some people together and hopefully keep the momentum going you 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 didn't mention the after party jimmy um you know i think that's going to be a, a wonderful opportunity for us to see a new space that's that's for sure and i actually saw it from the street from the from the brass bunker the other day and i thought oh what's that up there and then uh -huh. lo and behold you've, you've uh, you know you've organized to use the space so yes the record bites a uh, relatively new venue in Northbridge off William Street so we've got the rooftop from 4 p.m on the 31st of July so come up yeah we're putting on some a free drink and some nibbles for everyone so you're more than welcome to to pop on up um, from four I, I don't know until whenever we finish <laughs> Could be a big owl uh, involved. Anything can happen. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I just think that you know sometimes to unwind after you've you know you've heard the the conference and then to uh, to form those alliances, things happen very very quickly when when you you know you, you you're socialising as well and all of our international. Um, events end with that socializing and that is when most of the deals are done because it's all fresh top of mind and you know I've made some wonderful alliances so I will definitely be there yeah one of my favorites actually is that the Scarborough Beach markets um, early on when we were first starting town team movement the Scarborough guys uh, came to our meeting and met the Inglewood guys and so the Inglewood guys who do the Monday night markets were very uh, generous in helping the Scarborough guys get their Scarborough Beach Twilight Markets off the ground. And yeah, as you say, that was just, you know, over a beer, you know, they worked it all out and then suddenly there's another amazing uh, market, you know, it would, would be amazing to think what the impact of just that that alone would be on, well, on Scarborough and supporting Scarborough businesses and supporting up and coming 
food trucks and supporting community connections in Scarborough. So yeah, it's amazing um, what can come up, come out of a beer. Can't especially after you know Scarborough spent quite some time redeveloping that uh, that foreshore. So there was a lot of negativity around that, and a lot of businesses were impacted by that. So you know to have a festival come and bring people along, you know to 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 reestablish. Um, after they finish the development is you know it's been wonderful so you know Fremantle I was there last week you know there's a lot of work going on to um, to bring to fruition some of the mayor's um, thinking and plans and when we talk about not getting involved in politics and things like that whilst I am a political I, I do still see people individuals doing good stuff so you know brad stands out as being one of those individuals who's probably prepared to take on his ceo and and uh, and establish some of his direction as well but it you yeah. know it, it takes the individuals to to just stand up and, and be counted and have the courage of your convictions and and hopefully you know you get that aligned and uh, another example might have been when Mark Irvin, mayor for uh, City of Stirling, decided that they would put the chairs out on the street and there wouldn't have to be a, a license um, fee. It made a big difference, didn't it? And I think more and more, certainly what we advocate is, you know, that you can do more and more stuff without government, um, you know, and you don't need to be a politician or or a rich business magnate to to contribute to society or and make it better you know you can just do it you know in really simple ways i love that example of um those guys i can't remember where it was uh but they drew the zebra crossing <laughs> across the you know illegally uh drew that zebra crossing across the street was it damn i can't remember where but you know those sort of things even just you know Illegal stuff, but stuff in service, I think, um, is really, you know, that's sort of fun and clever and, um, you know, more of that, I reckon. What did someone that's call That's a cool that? idea, Jimmy. Where did that happen? Oh, I'll find, I'll find out. I'll let you know. Yeah. Um, I thought it was Fremantle, Adam. Was it? No? No, I don't think so. I've heard about it. I think it, I don't think it was, yeah. in, I don't think it was in WA, was it? I'm not sure. I've seen it as well. It's, it's good. I think it. I think it was in WA. Um, I'll find out. Yeah. The um, non-government, non-politics approach appeals to me. My um, friend who was on the council here at Town of Cambridge has just resigned because he was just banging his head against a wall. So, any any ideas which are like, we'll just do our own thing, <laughs> are quite appealing right now. <laughs> I was like, he was my man on the inside and was doing stuff that I thought was important. Um, but obviously, the rest of the councillors didn't really agree. So, we'll see what we can do without them. <laughs> Sometimes it's better to seek forgiveness than it is to ask permission. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> <laughs> within the, you know, within certain boundaries, I understand as well. But so we're getting close to the end of uh, our time now basically Nana and you know Enkel and, um, and different organizations are really wanting to keep the momentum going so um, what can people do Jimmy to get involved in a town team what's the best way to go about it yeah well the only thing is uh, so similar to Nina we're an organization that's built on principles so uh, all we ask if you, anyone could be a town team as long as they um, agree to our principles which is um, be positive and proactive so it's about um, contribution um, so they're not lobby groups or, or um or you know that they, they basically get on and do stuff they're doing groups um yeah apolitical and we do that because yeah we find that if some groups back a team then that can uh that can that can cause all sorts of problems and um, so we just sort of say, you know, if you I st stay out of that and get stuff done rather than um, try and get too involved in the fights and whatever. Um, and then having some sort of um, town or main street and, uh, and 
ideally, if, if you do have a main street or a town, then, you know, that there'd be a mix of businesses and residents that are involved. Yeah, and that's sort of the basic principles, I guess. Um, and then, yeah, you sign up, but there's no fees or anything. Um, you just agree to be to be a town team. We add you to the register and, um, yeah, and then you plug into our network and we have um, various initiatives that we support our team. So we have, yeah, town team hub with resources, various social gatherings throughout the year. We have our thought leadership events. Um, we have a partnership with RAC, um, which means that there's a little bit of money available for teams. We advocate on behalf of the teams to, to governments um, to help them get on board with this. We've got a few other partnerships about to announce, hopefully. Um, one's with uh, Volunteering WA. Um, so they're a really uh, wonderful organisation um, who can sort of help teams access volunteers more easily and effectively so pretty excited to hopefully um, be announcing something uh, with them soon yeah so we yeah we just partner and try and enable enable ac action that's what we're about so anyone yeah if you wanted to start a team Bethan's got it Bethan started a team flower district yeah you can just just uh, basically hold a meeting and you know start talking and then do where are you based jeremy yeah i'm up in the perth hills that's where i'm yeah, based so yeah yeah so uh, is, are there any have you got any ideas for activation up in the hills or is it quiet or uh... oh mate <laughs> so many yeah there's <laughs> um i've been involved in a group up here which is kind of a little bit more um well let's just say uh reactive and having to kind of fight um it's the safe perth hills group um, but we're looking forward to shifting gears and being a bit more proactive. So, um, yeah, we're having a lot of wins at the minute and we should be able to switch into proactive mode pretty soon. But, yeah, uh, up here, the, the the case for a sustainable economic future um, around livable streets and taking advantage of the natural assets of the Perth Hills rather than just, you know, build, build, build. That's kind of, yeah, the opportunity to be seized. Um, otherwise, they would, yeah, they would very, the hills will very quickly turn into a, an extension of Perth's urban sprawl if we're not careful. So uh, there's absolutely uh, a need for that kind of work and advocacy up here. So we've been pretty successful, I think, to you know, be the neck that turns the head and influence ideas um, on the council level. And, yeah, council's almost unrecognisable to the council we had 18 months ago in many ways. Um, they're definitely singing a very different tune now, so that's good. Well done. Sometimes it's just consistent pressure, you know, not going away. They certainly do get, uh, you know, their fair share of, of uh, groups and organisations asking for handouts, but when you're actually taking the solution to them, they are receptive. It still takes time, but they are receptive. They, you take a problem to them, you know, they'll shut down as much as anybody else will. But if you take a solution to them, you've got half a chance. Now, I saw you raise your hand there, Beth. Do you want to quickly say something whilst we close? Yeah. No, it was a little, oh, oh maybe I pressed the wrong thing. It was oh, a clap because right. that's great to get a change in council um, and to get people who are willing to step up to do that as well so just a little well yeah. done jeremy <laughs> thank you yeah yeah it's been a journey yeah <laughs> and in closing maggie have you got anything you'd, you'd like to say just to say thank you and it's been really interesting i think these fireside chats you know sometimes um you know it just stimulates the imagination and you know i get so much every time we're in a small intimate group like this and you you actually can dig a little bit deeper than when you're in a massive um, group. So thank you, everybody. We are almost at time. Thank you very much, Jimmy. That was wonderful. And, um, you know, keep yeah. up the great work. And I hope to speak to you soon as we get City of Joondal up really focused on um, on making the changes that are required for that for that particular area and being my home area um i can't wait to to uh to, to see those changes and there's already been some ideas uh, 
you had a couple of colleagues uh, who were the investors who were talking about those uh, lane names and things like that. Is that materialized any further or? Yeah, no, I, I haven't. I have to pick it up though. I think um, June Love have been going through, um, well, you know, typical local government, they need to plan they need to plan a few things first. So they're having to plan out their activation strategy before they uh, take any active action. So um, I think, you know, they've been going through their planning process. So it'll be interesting to see what comes out of that, whether a town team is part of what they uh, want to do or not. But I think we should do anything, do something anyway. I, I will support that wholeheartedly. So maybe, maybe you and I have a chat rather than having... Yeah. William there next time. Let's just uh, see what we can do. It's yeah, fun. I'd love to. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Thank you for joining us. And um, we look forward to seeing you in a fortnight. Thank you.